Also, we got to talk about the uh, the health care uh, repeal and replace Obamacare with Obamacare. I think that's a <laughs> new health care. But, but, you know, actually, let, let's step back about the, on this health care thing, okay? This this is the, the proposal that the GOP has made for how they're going to repeal Obamacare and what they're going to replace it with. And conservatives are a little concerned that it's, as, as Rand Paul is calling it, it's Obamacare light. And, and I want to take a step back, because this is only the beginning. There's going to be all these arguments and, you know, amendments and changes and, and all this stuff. And so maybe it's, it's a good thing, I think, that it gets out in the open and the, the arguments and the debates begin. But the, the idea is that it's going to repeal, uh, let's see, it's going to repeal the, um, the mandate the requirement that Americans have health coverage or pay a penalty. So you won't be paying a penalty, and it will even forgive, I think, backwards the, the penalty that you would have paid for not having health care in 2016. And it's, it's also uh, got keeps – it gets rid of the mandate that larger employers provide health insurance to workers, and it also repeals most of the taxes that Obamacare imposes uh, and, and uh, freezes funding after 2020 for the states that expanded M Medicaid under the law. So it does do a lot of it does do a lot of good things. I mean, these are you know these taxes are ridiculous. The uh, the Medicaid expansion is incredibly expensive, but it also it retains the requirements that insurance cover people with pre existing conditions, which as I keep pointing out is government health care. If insurers have to insure you when you're already sick, that's not insurance. That's not how insurance works. Insurance is a gamble that you make with the health company. You are gambling that you will get sick, and they are gambling that you will stay well long enough for them to collect enough money from, from you to pay for your being sick. <clears throat> the idea is that you win either way, because if you're well, you don't care, and if you're sick, you get the money. So it, it also has this kind of weird... Uh, for, first of all, it gives tax credits to people, to lower income people uh, and older people for health care. So that's kind of a, a uh, that's kind of an entitlement right there. And it also creates this kind of backdoor mandate where if you let your insurance lapse and you go back, it charges you 30 percent. Here is the problem with getting rid of it. What do we do about the poor? Nobody wants to say this, it's right, because it's, they're all talking about ins making sure everybody has insurance. That's, that is not the problem. If you, made, if you created a, a system in which all insurers were competing with all other insurers, and people could just get insurance that only covered them in case of a disaster, right? So I'll, I'll pay for my checkups. I'll pay for my, you know, whatever, my hearing aid or whatever I need, you know. I'll pay for some, some meds. Prices drop. Television sets come out, and they cost a million dollars. And then within a year, they cost you know five hundred dollars because there's competition, right? The prices go down once everybody is buying in. That would help happen with health care too, except in cases of catastrophic you know care where you need catastrophic care, so you get insurance for that. <clears throat> still, still, you have the poor. So every time Republicans try to fix this system. The NBC, CBS, the Democrat news media, you know, ABC, the New York Times, Washington Post is going to run out, find a poor person dying, sick, coughing up his lungs, take pictures of it, put it on TV, and say, this is what this Republicans killed this man, you know, and this woman, this child, all these things. And, and, you know, we're all nice people. We don't want to have that happen. We don't want the poor to die because they can't afford health care. And the big thing, the big thing that nobody talks about is people talk about the skyrocketing cost of health care. That's not what is happening. What is happening is until, let's see, what is it? It's 2016. Until about 100 years ago, health care, we didn't have any health care. You couldn't do anything. Maybe 150 years ago. Doctors used to kill you. You know, they'd come over and bleed you, you know, they'd come over and do this stuff. And they was, it was like magic. It was like witch doctor magic until the invention, the discovery of antibiotics by men, <laughs> as, as we recall from our opening, until the discovery of antibiotics, you know, they weren't really doing anything. Now they can help you. Now they can do amazing things. They can keep you alive. They can get your limbs. They can do all this stuff. And it all costs money. So the question is, what is going to happen to the poor? And personally, 
I, I think there's going to have to be an answer to this. One of the things about understanding that freedom dies is understanding you have to make little compromises as you go along, just like you do when you have when you get older. You know, I, like I don't want to concede anything to old age, but eventually I stopped doing martial arts because I <laughs> knew I was going to get catastrophically injured. You know, you give up little bits during the 30s. You know, conservatives lost the argument over welfare. We started to have a welfare state as all free nations start to have a welfare state. And yes, is it the beginning of the end? Yes, it is. Do you have to do it? Yes, you do. Why? Because freedom creates wealth and wealth makes people say, well, you know, how come people are dying on the streets when our country is so rich and all this stuff? So that is something that happens. And then, you know, you have to fight the growth of welfare, but it slowly grows. And the same thing is true of health care. The only thing I would say before we cut away and bring on our guests, the only thing I would say is it it is possible that the GOP should grasp the nettle, as they say, should understand that there is going to have to be an, an entitlement for the poor. The poor can no longer go to their families and get the kind of health care that people can get. There may have to be a separate bill to deal with this. And maybe trying to deal with it all in this one bill is the big mistake they're making. Because essentially what this bill does so far is it accepts the logic of Obamacare, that the government has to do something for everybody, has to have health care, provide health care for everybody. It accepts that logic, which is the logic of equality, government growth, and ultimately the destruction of freedom. So let's see what happens. I mean, this is not the time to panic, not the time to run around. It is the time to watch the fight. The big, the big thing, I'll conclude with this, is that Trump is, Trump's reputation is riding on this. Because up till now, <coughs> everything has been executive orders and the, and the Twitter sideshow, right? This is governing. This is when you get on the phone and call up the lawmakers and say what you want. Trump so far has supported this bill, but we'll have to see what happens.